because of anything has a team been assembled this committed, this dedicated, this intelligent, this pretty. I gotta tell you, I put this team up against any other team on the planet. And uh, I wanna acknowledge every single one of you for the hard work that you put into getting here. You know, every single one of you has worked tirelessly and, and I appreciate you for that. You know, I'm just humbled. And last night we were having fun, doing our thing. You know, I kept thinking to myself, I'm the CEO of a company, right? That's, I've, I've been a CEO since I was 19 years old. For those of you not familiar with my story, uh, I had anything but a traditional path to becoming an entrepreneur. In fact, I still can't spell the word entrepreneur. <laughs> and I'm considered one of the best of them. And I can't even spell it. So every one of us has a different path on our way to becoming the CEO, of our lives, of our companies, of whatever it is. And each of us, you know, we have to set our own goals, we have to set our own expectations, we have to, you know, set our own milestones, whatever it is, and focus and get there. So today I'm just going to talk to you, if I can, CEO to CEO. I've never held a mic this far away from me and had to project, this is interesting. Um, but may I talk CEO to CEO? Yes. So, for the past, uh, since November, literally left Nick's wedding, and we were talking about the March to the Billion Cause with many of the leaders that were at Nick's wedding, and I realized that the only thing that I could do to support the cause was to start building infrastructure, start building the right team, and putting together a team capable of supporting your customers, a culture capable of actually eliminating the gap between the field and corporate, and I realized that was the most important responsibility I could have as CEO of the company. So I did, uh, and the first time in the history of humanity, I'm the first individual to ever relocate to Detroit. <laughs> from Southern California. When I could literally be like on my own island somewhere in the winter. And I just, I realized that we had to be there to support you guys. So I've been working with this executive team, I'm going to introduce them in a little bit here, day in and day out, to completely build an infrastructure capable of going to March to a Billion, which we're on the cusp of. And just so you guys understand, the reward in life is not the paycheck. It's not the millions of dollars. It's not the mansions. It's not the cars. All those things, if that's what you want, you can have them. Maybe those are, you know, short-term crushes or flings or something you want to see if you're capable of. And I can tell you, I've, you know, having come from where I've come from and having experienced life so far, all those things don't really matter. You know what matters? The journey. The reward is not the destination. It is not the day that you're going to have a million dollars in the bank. The reward is challenging yourself to do the utmost, absolute, best you possibly can. A guy named John Wooden, any of you guys familiar with uh, legendary basketball coach John Wooden? I had the privilege, myself, Nick and Blake, to sit down with John. And I'm in this guy's home. It's a little apartment in El Segundo, or not El Segundo, Encino, California. And there's 10 national championship trophies. There's letters from presidents. There's a presidential medal of freedom. You guys know what that is? That's the highest honor a civilian can get in America. And I'm holding this thing in my hand. And he's 98 years old. And he's mentoring me. He's sharp as a tack. He's giving me, I'm asking him questions. You know, should I do this? Should I do that? And he's literally giving me mentorship right then and there. And I'm talking to him about, you know, I'm looking at a 98 year old man who's, you know, he's, he's uh, at the very end of his life. He's accomplished more than anyone could imagine. And I'm just sitting there realizing, you know what, at the end of my days, I want to be 98 years old and have 30 something showing up to my house asking for advice, right? That's, that's success. You know what one of John's greatest values was? He said, and this is one of the things I'm going to share with you, one of the, the pieces of culture that we've infused into our internal team. He said, be a, good, or be a good teacher, but be a better student. And as he's 98, accomplished all this, he's sitting there learning from me. And so I share that with you because what we really are 
what you are as entrepreneurs, what I am, we're just teachers. I have to teach and mentor our employees. I have to teach the teachers who teach and mentor the employees. I have to recruit great teachers to help teach the subjects that I'm not great at teaching, like pretty much all subjects other than entrepreneurship. <laughs> and that's all we are. As CEOs, all you are is a teacher. You're a teacher to your family, you're a teacher to your community, you're a teacher to your team, you're a teacher to yourself, that's all you are, and then you're a student. So one, I appreciate all of you guys taking notes here. What I'm gonna to talk to you about right now is culture. Culture is something that, that if you can master this one thing, and I learned it from a guy named Tony Shea, the CEO of Zappos. Any of you guys familiar with Zappos? They got a pretty good culture over there, right? So I mean, they have, they're revered as one of the best places to work. They have the best customer service. I take our executive team on a bit of a pilgrimage to Zappos, where we go tour the entire operations. I send them to a boot camp, literally, to learn from their customer service people, from their IT people. And then at the very end of the boot camp, I get them a one-on-one -on -one session or a, a group session with the CEO of the company, Tony Shea. And what we talk about is how can we become not the next Herbalife or the next Amway. All those companies are pretty much crap in my, in my view. How can we become the next Apple? Right? How can we become one of the, one of the, a company that stands for change? How can we transcend this entire industry? And the answer always comes down to this. You know why some companies never get past a hundred million dollars? And many of us have been in this industry forever and we wonder, we got a company right now, the last quarter did 136 million in sales. And we're growing. And if you take that times four, that's a big company, right? We haven't even started. This cause right now is at less than 1% of what it will be two years from now, three years from now, five years from now. Some people, some people say, oh, you know, they're about to do a billion dollars. It must be the next opportunity down the road. We have just started. The teams that we're up against, the competition is so inferior that like, you gotta laugh. I don't know how this industry does 118 billion dollars in sales and we're the first group that's gonna capture the flag. Do you wanna know why? You wanna know why they, they stop at 100 million, why they stop at 500 million, why? You know why? Because they're there for the wrong intentions. They, they got in the game to get rich. They got in the game to make money. They got in the game because they wanted their ego to be held up high. They got in the game because they wanted to feel the love from the crowd or whatever it was, or they had some political or religious or whatever purpose. They got in the game for the wrong reason. They didn't get in the game to change the world. They got in the game to feel good and be rich and all that other stuff. Myself, Nick and Blake, and the founding leadership team, the leaders that are here, we're not, in, we're not here to, to get to some million dollar or billion dollar milestone. We're here to stand for change and so at the end of our days, when we're John Wooden's age, we're 98 years old, we can say, you know, to our maker, the man upstairs, I'll put it all on the table. I spent it all. I didn't, leave, I didn't leave a single thing in this earth. I spent it all. Isn't that? But it's so often in our society, we get afraid, we get caught up in hype and materialism and all these other things. And I understand it, believe me, I, I, I've had my fair share of uh, humble learnings. <laughs> but I'm sharing that with you because right now you have an opportunity to do something, to look back at this time, this moment that you're in these seats, the time last night, the time tonight, you have an opportunity right now to look back 10 years, 20 years and say, I was one of the people that did it. Not only did we completely change an entire industry, but we changed millions of people's perspective on life, health, and prosperity. And you can say that the work that you did as a teacher filled you up in spirit for the rest of your life. Isn't that what it's all about? I mean, what else is there?
you guys know this. So I'm gonna share with you the internal culture that we've created. I'm gonna introduce you to some of the new executive members. But I have a video. Uh, for those of you who don't know this, I grew up in Los Angeles and I like rap. So you're gonna have to uh, forgive me for a little bit of the hip hop here. Uh, so I wanna cue the video right now, but what, what I'm gonna set this up is, these are the values. And when you see our cultural values, realize this. Adapt them, take them, modify them, apply them, and use them in your own team. Because these are the values that Vaisal stands for. Every employee is screened to these values. Meaning they don't get hired, and believe me, we got PhDs and all kinds of degrees working with us. They don't get hired if they don't first embody these values. Over 50% of the hiring decision is based on these values. And these people, by the way, CEO to CEO, we work for you. All the people on the parade on this stage, the VP of this, this smart guy, this smart girl, this doctor, they work for you. I work for you. 100%. No, I, I mean that. Don't get, don't get caught up in all the corporate America, this, that, and the other. We work for you. Everything. From the buildings that we build, to the marketing materials, to the tools that we create, to the products we create, that is all 100% on behalf of you and your company, you as a CEO of your distributorship within our field, 100%. So I'm going to share with you a quick video about the culture of our company, and I'm going to introduce you to some of the people that actually are influencing that culture. So if you cue the video, John.